Hello, I would like to address a serious issue today and it's about the receiving of grace of God and what that means and if grace of God can be lost again and what it means to live a life of holiness before the Lord and what it means to live the way that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has taught us how we should live, how we should live a life that leads to heaven in the end after we die. So, I would like to begin with Matthew 18, um, 21 to 35. And this is really serious because many Christians have it wrong. They teach some kind of grace that is given freely, which is right. God gives grace freely without uh, any preconditions except of putting faith in Him and in His Son Jesus Christ and what God did by Jesus Christ, by sending Jesus Christ the Son to earth and to die for our sins on the cross and being risen from the dead for the forgiveness of our sins and for the cleansing of our sins but now this does not mean that if someone puts faith in the Son of God and in his work of redemption that um, he is just saved for all time um, by receiving the grace of God because God can decide who um, can live in his grace and whom he can take this grace away from again. There are many people who teach once saved always saved but this is not so because God tells us here in his word in Matthew 18 21 to 35 through his son Jesus Christ the certain uh, the following parable of the unmerciful servant and I would like you to listen to this because this is really serious this is a really serious matter and it could be very um, could be very negative for you if you get this wrong and if your theology is a wrong theology of a false security that you live in and that you believe in which is not the case I read the parable then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. 
This is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So, you see, the servant was pardoned by his master. He was indebted to his master, but in his mercy the master pardoned the servant. He was merciful. But then, later on, the servant of the servant came and the servant of the master was not merciful with the servant. But he demanded everything to be paid back to him that he owed him. And the master uh, heard about this and he was angry with him. He was angry that although he had forgiven his debt, the servant of this master did not forgive the debt of his servant. He was pardoned. He was being treated mercifully. He was forgiven. But then, after the servant's own merciless behavior, he was taken away, this mercy by his master. And the master punished the servant and demanded everything to be paid back as he, the servant of the master, had demanded his servant to pay everything back to him. So, the mercy was taken away from him. Equally, God can take his grace away from a person that was forgiven of his or her sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. When this person does not follow the commandments of God that were given through his son Jesus Christ. And especially when people do not show love, when people do not act in love, when people do not live in active love. And faith is active by active love, by doing the commandments of God that He had given through His Son Jesus Christ, and not simply by speaking words or speaking uh, the words of the Bible, but to do the words of the Bible and to live a merciful life because God can take away His grace that He has given freely without any preconditions except faith that is even um, a gift of God to the believer but He can equally take away this gift if a believer does not live a fruitful life a fruitful life of fruits of love, of good fruits. And by that uh, it can be seen who is a real believer in the Lord and who is um, just, a, uh, just a person confessing to be a Christian but not being truly in the Spirit, in the love of God and living by the commandments of the Lord because uh, the true believers in the Lord the true ones they do not live in sin they live in holiness they live in love and mercy they know God and God knows them but God can if he wishes and if he sees the fruitless life of a person take away his grace and such a person will end up in hell and you should be aware of this thank you for listening